Hey everyone, and welcome back to another Security Topics video. In this video, I'm going to be covering the WebRTC CSP bypass. Um, for the rest of the video, I'm going to give the briefest of introductions to content security policy, and then the briefest of introductions to WebRTC. Uh, really, it'll be more of a review of content security policy in case uh, maybe you knew at some point and you've kind of forgot what it's all about, and then the WebRTC is just a brief introduction. And then after that, I have a little example challenge that we're going to go through and talk about how to use this bypass to solve the challenge. We're gonna talk about the fix to this challenge, um, and that's it. So again, I'm not gonna do justice in covering CSP. Uh, it is a pretty rich topic. Um, I have a 40 minute video on a different channel. It's called Content Security Policy Zero to Hero. Uh, that's the name of the video. Um, I'll link it below. Um, but as a very brief refresher, um, CSP was built to prevent XSS. It is a technology that is already built into every browser. The web server sends it to the browser through HTTP headers and the browser enforces the policy for the web page. Um, so here we have an example policy. Uh, the dark blue are all directives. Everything else is a source. Uh, we can see we have the font source as an example. This means it allows fonts to be loaded from fonts.gstatic.com, also from a inline data stream, or from the same origin that delivered the policy. <coughs> and anywhere else, if the browser uh, tries to load uh, fonts, uh, they will be blocked. Uh, so we can also see here's image source. Um, we're allowed to load images anywhere from an HTTPS scheme and anywhere there's an inline image or from the same origin. And here we see script source. We're allowed to load scripts from the same origin from stripe.com slash v3, googleanalytics.com slash analytics.js, so only this very specific file on this domain, or anything uh, googletagmanager.com slash gtag slash js and below. Um, cool, again, there's a lot more to it. Uh, there's a fuller length video there, or there's a bajillion resources online on CSP. Um, I guess I should also clarify that uh, before we talk about the exploit, um, so the primary goal of CSP is to block XSS. Um, one of the stated goals in the CSP v3 spec is that you can also use it to restrict your website, and you can kind of use it, um, or you can attempt to use it to prevent exfiltration. Um, so we can uh, specify who the browser is allowed to communicate with through the fetch API and the XML HP request API, even though they're the same now, um, through the connect source. This is also webhooks, I'm sorry, uh, web sockets. Um, so we could try to restrict uh, if you have XSS, where you're allowed to like exfiltrate information out to. Um, but I think we'll find uh, that it's pretty much impossible uh, in a real world app, but it is fun to try on CSP challenges. So the next technology that we're going to be using to bypass uh, CSP exfiltration is uh, WebRTC. I'm not going to go into too much detail about this. Again, it is a very rich subject. Um, and the more I learn about it, the more I realize I have no idea about so many things. Um, but WebRTC, uh, Web Real-Time Communication, it's a technology that you can use for doing video conferencing, for example. Anywhere you have a low latency application that communicates with another peer. And so uh, video conferencing is just a great example. If I want to video conference with my grandma, for example, or through Google Meet, um, I guess FaceTime is the better analogy, um, but through a web server, um, it's better if I can just connect, it take the shortest path between client one and client two, instead of having to, instead of having to proxy all my communication through some server. Um, and so that just reduces the latency. So as part of this protocol, again, I'm not gonna go into it too much. Really, we don't really care how the specifics of the protocol work, but just for general information, uh, the first step is some signaling process. Uh, this requires the, an intermediate server. Uh, both clients are going to generate a payload of different ways that they allow hosts to connect to them. Uh, this is done through a stun server, which kind of helps them figure out their IP address. Then the, the hard part about WebRTC is actually NAT traversal. Um, so just as a refresher, assuming this is kind of like a standard home, there's usually a router or modem, and anything under the router and motor, so your laptops and phones and uh, connected devices, they all have a private IP address. And the only thing with a public IP address is the router. So for example, if I wanna talk to my grandma, uh, she's go also going to have a private IP address. There's no way for me to like uh, connect to her device directly. Like it's not accessible. There's like no value I can connect to like an IP address. So anyways, a lot of the trouble is not traversal. So there's no way for me to like even specify client to. And so um, as part of that, there's this other protocol called ICE, um, which is used to provide candidates of different ways that these two clients can connect. The two big ones are STUN and TURN. STUN is preferential. Uh, this is the peer-to-peer -peer connection. Um, and basically it's gonna communicate like, hey, this is my IP address. This is how you can connect to me. This is how we can bypass uh, natting. Um, 
and punching through and stuff. So that doesn't always work. Um, I think it said some, I was reading some slides or watching a talk from, I think it was a Google talk and they were saying like 80% of the time or something like that, they can use stun. Uh, but 20% of the time, uh, depending on the website and the technology, blah, 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 uh, they have to fall back to turn. And so turn is similar to having a, just a middle proxy server for relaying the information. Um, it's just a dedicated turn server. Um, and so it would exist on the public internet and both places can connect. I guess you could have a turn server internal to an organization too, but uh, just think of it, it's another server that both clients can connect to and use that as the intermediary. Cool. Uh, so I'm going to go through a little challenge. Uh, the idea of this challenge is we have XSS, uh, we have execution on a page, and the flag exists on the page, and somehow we have to exfiltrate the flag off of the page. So in the context of a CTF challenge, normally this means that you're going to supply an admin bot a URL. The URL contains the XSS payload. It could be reflected or something like that. Um, the admin bot's going to execute it, and so the admin bot sees the real flag, and somehow you have to like you know exfiltrate that off. It could also be like a, a more real world example would be like if you have an XSS that goes through a URL to like a uh, crypto exchange, for example, and maybe the crypto exchange for some reason has private keys on the web page. I would really hope it doesn't, but or you can access private keys through the API. Again, I really hope it doesn't do that, but you can imagine you have you have an XSS, you sent it to your victim. And now you're trying to exfiltrate their private key to, you know, some CRC or, or some other service that you control. Um, so uh, that is the challenge setup. How this actually looks is I just have a little HTML page. It's going to define a CSP. So we're using the CSP to prevent exfiltration. So we have a default source of none. Most of the directives default back to default source. There's like five or so that don't. Um, but basically this means that we cannot load images from anywhere. We cannot load fonts from anywhere. We cannot connect anywhere. Um, iframes, all that stuff, uh, we cannot do. Um, and so uh, very restrictive. The only thing that we get are script source and we can do the XSS with unsafe inline and unsafe eval. Uh, like I said, there's a couple that don't. We're gonna talk about them in a second, like form action and stuff that we technically should be supplying, but we're not. Um, anyways, uh, here is the flag. It's on the page. We just need to you know document get element by ID, ID, um, flag, and we can steal the flag. Uh, this is a little helper utility. It's just a form. Uh, let me actually load the look page. Uh, it's just a little form. We can or submit our payload here. Um, and then when we hit submit, it actually gets executed. Um, and then the rest of it is just a little script tag that is going to um, uh, read in the query parameter. We might've saw that alert got passed up here in the payload. It's gonna read the payload and eval it. Um, cool. So uh, a couple things. Uh, if this didn't have CSP enabled and we wanted to steal this flag through just like a standard XSS, we could imagine that we would just do a fetch call, you know, and we would specify our own endpoint and we would uh, add on the flag, uh, something like this. Um, and so then our flag would be sent to an endpoint we control and we would see the web request and we would exfiltrate it. We could also imagine embedding an image, for example, and on the image, you know, including the flag. Um, there's another CSP bypass we could try that's very related. Uh, there's pre-connect and pre or DNS prefetch, um, which is just a way to speed up initial page load. Um, sometimes you can use that to exfiltrate, so we could try embedding some of those. Um, there's a bypass that would definitely work uh, that uh, is kind of a, an awkward topic, um, but we could also do um, something like this, uh, dot plus flag. Um, so we can do a full page redirect and redirect to a domain we control with the flag. Uh, this would work. And this is not actually, it's not possible to block this using CSP in the current form. Uh, there was a way for a little bit, but it was uh, disabled because of uh, privacy concerns with redirects. Um, so we could also do this. This is also a totally valid cheese. Uh, like I said, we can also embed forms and then because we don't specify form action, um, but basically there's a lot of different things we can do, uh, but we're gonna assume none of those work. And we're going to focus specifically on the WebRTC bypass. Uh, and so the WebRTC bypass is, as part of WebRTC, we need to be able to connect to a remote host. And as it currently stands, or when you want to initiate the WebRTC protocol with a peer, uh, it is not blocked by CSP. It's not part of connect source. Uh, there's a directive that's coming out in the future, potentially, uh, that we'll talk about. Uh, but as it currently stands, uh, even with the most restrictive CSP policy, uh, it is uh, not blocked. Um, so it basically like kind of negates using uh, CSP as a exfiltration solution. Um, to see what that actually looks like, uh, I think I have a payload here, yep. Uh, this is the example payload we're gonna use. Um, just gonna pop this in. Actually, let's look at it with uh, <laughs> syntax highlighting. Uh, so we're gonna grab the flag 
uh, we're going to establish an RTC peer connection. Uh, we're going to do a stun. So this is the one we like. This is the one where we're doing actually a peer to peer connection. We're going to send the flag body uh, here. And then we need to have a domain uh, where we can see the resolve request. Um, so we could spin up an EC2 and install a bind server and create it or buy a domain address um, and point it to our bind server and have it resolve and you know do all the uh, zones and all that stuff. Uh, but it turns out there is a free tool uh, that you can use for logging DNS requests, uh, which is amazing. And it allocates a, a DNS entry for you, which is super cool. Um, it's project discovery interact sh. Um, so you can just do a go install uh, and yeah, that's it. Um, so we're gonna set it up. Um, so it's gonna allocate an IPv or an I sorry a DNS entry for us, uh, and we got one here. So we're gonna put this here. Um, then we can do a dig request um, and see if it's working. So a DNS query. We're gonna dig. Let's do hello at this DNS, and we can see we get the request. Uh, so there was an A query for hello, and then our uh, unique domain. Um, so cool. So we have a way to leak DNS queries. Um, so that's what we're going to be doing here. Let me grab the domain. So uh, when we execute the script, uh, a browser is going to start making a WebSocket RTC peer connection. Um, we don't actually care about the WebRTC protocol. We just care that a DNS request is going to be made to the flag body plus um, this you know, unique domain. Um, and when we do that, uh, hopefully, uh, We'll leak the flag out, and we will have successfully exfiltrated a very locked down CSP policy. Uh, we can see we get our callback here, and we have place fault or placeholder fake flag. Um, so cool. So even with a super restricted CSP policy, ignoring all the other CSP bypasses, uh, we were able to uh, leak the flag using WebRTC. Um, so cool. I guess not cool for web security, but <laughs> cool for this challenge. Um, anyways. So this is obviously a known issue. I think this uh, this is the original issue tracker for it. I think it's like 2016. Yeah, 2016. Um, so it's been known for a long time uh, that this is an issue. Uh, so why has it been open for four years? And uh, my understanding from uh, working with CSP a lot and also reading through this issue list is that it's just it's kind of hard to find. There's two things. One, it's it's a little bit difficult to find the right granularity for WebRTC. Uh, there's a bit of back and forth on like you know should it be part of Connect Source? Uh, is it something we care about? Um, should you be able to specify individual host? Uh, and I, I think I, I do like the uh, what they ended up uh, resolving on. Um, they're very smart people, way smarter than me. Um, but it, it definitely makes sense to me anyways. Um, and the other reason is like CSP was built for XSS prevention, not so much for exfiltration prevention. Um, and so I can see why it hasn't always been the highest priority issue to fix, uh, just because I think uh, Attempting to use CSP for to prevent exfil on any sufficiently large website is like pretty much impossible. Um, so, anyways, uh, the solution that isn't implemented yet in browsers, uh, I couldn't find it on like the Mozilla uh, browser tracker. Anyways, uh, is this uh, WebRTC directive that hopefully will eventually be part of uh, browsers in the CSP. And um, this is part of CSP v3 spec. Um, and so for web, you can either enable or disable WebRTC, um, and that's it. So as part of your policy, you would say this website uses WebRTC or this website does not use WebRTC. And part of the reason of doing allow and block instead of allowing the individual sources like the rest of CSP does is because if you enable peer-to-peer -peer communication with arbitrary host, you're basically allowing peer-to-peer, -peer, allowing, I guess, exfiltration with arbitrary host. Like if you if your app allows you to connect anyone, then you have to be able to connect anyone. So really, like you, we could do, or the CSP authors could have done, you know, you can specify individual sources. Uh, but at the end of the day, like for any app, like Google Meet, for example, one person needs to be able to talk to another person. You don't know who that is beforehand. So it's a necessity, it just has to be star anyways, which just means all. Um, so... It ended up being allow block. Uh, like I said, it's not implement as far as I can tell, it's not implemented in browsers. I, I tried it quickly in my Chrome and it didn't work. Um, so either you can allow it or block it. So I would guess if you're not using WebRTC, you should just say block and that will hopefully block this uh, exfiltration method. But it's really not a big deal since there's plenty of other holes and ways to exfiltrate data even with a lockdown CSP. So not too important yet, but it's nice to get it in the way or you know, nice to have a solution for this. 
So related CTF challenges, um, there was one very recently, Pico CTF 2024 Web Elements, a very difficult challenge. Technically, you couldn't use WebRTC uh, for this challenge uh, because it was blocked. There's like a, within Chrome, if you start up Chrome, you can supply some sort of like policy.json file. Again, this is not average use case. And you can specify like allow URLs and block URLs. For this, they specifically only allow uh, the, the server, uh, the, ch the specific challenge server and everything else was blocked. So that prevents uh, window.location bypasses and a bunch of other stuff. It also blocks the, CS or the uh, WebRTC bypass. I think to disable WebRTC was actually a patch version, but I could be misremembering. Um, but anyways, uh, even with all that, uh, there was a very cool write-up that I recommend checking out by Justin Steven. Uh, they also do some really cool heap talks um, that you can find on YouTube. Uh, but they ended up with X and XSS, so they have execution on a web page to leak out the flag. Uh, they were doing a denial of service attack on the web service and then a timing attack. Uh, and so you can use that to leak information about the flag. So if let's say you know you want to leak out the first bit. Um, if the bit is a one, uh, you have your script, just hammer the server as hard as you can. And then you connect to the server. And if the server is a little bit laggy, uh, you know, that the, the first bit is a, a one. And so even again, like if all the other exfiltration methods were fixed, uh, if you can find some route that slows down the web server, this will always be a viable method. Um, like a password reset or something that's doing password hashing, for example, if it's very slow, uh, yeah. Um, hopefully a single client can't, you know, slow down a, a real web server, but you know, there's always, there's always a way. <laughs> uh, the actual intended solution was using a feature feature called pending get beacon behind a feature flag. Using this, this wasn't part of the uh, allow block list or CSP framework. And so you could use this to actually uh, exfiltrate information. Um, also a very cool write-up. Uh, there was this uh, post, this was golf jail. I think this was Sekai uh, 23. Um, they, I think the intended solution was to use this WebRTC bypass. Um, so fun write up there and, uh, very related. Um, like I think I already mentioned it. There's also this DNS prefetching, very related attack where you can also leak through DNS queries. Um, some resources, uh, and closing thoughts. So there's the CSP V3 spec, uh, it's a good article. It's like hundred pages. I actually have a copy right there. Um, but that's cause I do it for work. There's also a, uh, service for WebRTC talk. Uh, it was a very, uh, good talk. They talk a lot about, uh, the different hosting and how to establish those peer to peer con uh, connections. Um, then there was this amazing article, uh, not familiar with this person, but uh, I'm just going to click on it. Um, they only have two blog posts on their, uh, their blog, um, but they talk about uh, exfiltration strategies with content security policy. They talk about if you use uh, nonces and hashes, uh, you basically have given up on exfiltration protections, which a lot of, webs a lot of websites do use nonces and hashes as part of their CSP fee through policy. Um, so uh, just very cool stuff, very good ideas. Um, yeah, I really liked uh, this blog post. I highly recommend checking it out. Uh, very technical. So in conclusion, I think it is a, you know, a very fun attack for uh, CTFs, but in terms of like real world applicability, uh, there's way easier ways to exfiltrate information, um, but still fun to check out. Uh, as always, if I said anything wrong, uh, please let me know. If you think there's anything important I missed, also please let me know. Uh, I'll put my Discord down there. Um, you can message me directly. I also have a Discord channel. You can message me and you can leave a YouTube comment. Uh, just please let me know if I said anything wrong. Uh, otherwise, uh, thanks for watching and I'll either see you at the next CTF or the next security topics. Cheers.